Let's solve number 25 on the AMC 10B. Okay, we've got a square of side length 4. And we have points P and Q on AD and CD respectively. Where AP has a equal to 8 fifths. And DQ equals 10 thirds. 10 thirds. Okay. A path begins on the segment from P to Q and continues. Okay, we've okay, let's just draw our path. We'll draw our path in blue. P to Q. And then it's gonna reflect by the law of reflection. So the law of reflection is just basically saying that this angle is equal to this angle. And then okay, it's asking if it hits a vertex, it terminates there. Otherwise, it continues forever. At which vertex does the path terminate, or does the path never terminate? Which one is it? Let's figure out. Let's figure out how to approach this problem. So the key trick for these kind of problems is you want to always reflect. So rather than saying we this reflection that's too hard to deal with, just let it pass through. And notice that it's, we have like a reflected grid. Let's say this is like CB, right? So I've actually got a ginormous reflected grid here, which you're going to be seeing later. And let's just see how our points label up here. So let's say this is our original grid. Let's zoom in here, right? C and D, right? This is our original grid. We can zoom in here. We start at this point, eight fifths. So we start, right? This is our original square grid. We start over here, eight fifths, and we're going till it's around 10 thirds here. Okay, first of all, we have this line, right? And we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep, we're gonna reflect. I'm actually gonna use a different color for this one here, but like, you know how we would reflect it like that in our grid, but instead of that, we're just gonna continue, we're just gonna continue this line forever until it hits some point, wherever that might be, right? Maybe somewhere over there, right? So first of all, what's the slope of this line? That's like has to be the biggest question, right? We have this four, this, this quantity is 12 fifths, right? For the sum to be four, that's 10 thirds. What's the slope of this line? The slope is just going to be rise over run, that's 12 fifths over 10 thirds. So let's just say 12 fifths divided by 10 thirds, and thirds or 12 fifths times 3 tenths when we can just say this is cancel 6, 5, 18 over 25. So the slope of this line is 18 over 25. So imagine we write an equation for this line. It's like, because we're going to keep, we're going to just, you know, whenever it hits a side, rather than reflecting it, hit here. Whenever it hits a side, like imagine this would go like that, but now we're just continuing it outwards. And you'll see, I'll explain more why exactly that works. But for now, imagine we just continue this line forever. What is the equation of this line, right? So we have our slope is 18 over 25th. Our y-intercept, well, let's just say this point is 0, 0, first of all. Our y-intercept is 8 fifths. So our equation is y equals 18 over 25x plus 8 over 5. That's the equation of our blue line. Okay, so first of all, let's go back to this reflection logic. So why can we just do this? Well, imagine we hit some point over here. Or imagine, or let's just take a simpler example. Imagine we reflect and then we get to B, right? Let's just say that. Now, imagine we do the same thing, except instead of reflecting, we just, we just continue out in the direction. And instead of saying, okay, we go back to B, let's say we go to this other point, which is equivalent to B. So if it reaches this point, it's going, passing through this point, it's the same thing as just saying, okay, I'll just go in this direction instead. Okay, and then let's say something else. Let's say it goes even farther. Let's say it goes all the way over here. So the key thing is here, we're, we're kind of ref, ref, reflecting this over on, over on top of each other. So this A will reflect across D to form another A. So I might as well call it like A prime and B prime, but it's going to get very messy there with how many A's and B's we have. So I'll just, I'll just say A and B right now. So let's say C over B, that's going to go to C. D over A, that goes to D. A over D, that goes to A. B over C, that goes to B. So, but, but what I mean by this is that this is, this is where, this is like the equivalent point. So let's say we go here and we hit point C here. That's going to be equivalent to hitting our C in our grid. It's just like, almost like, okay, we go here, we go, okay, let's just, let's just draw the parallel, just to make sure it's absolutely clear. We hit C here. That's the same thing as just saying, okay, we'll go, we'll go to this point. So that's, our green is like our hypothetical path. And now let's do our real path our real path will do in dot it. So let's say, okay, A goes here. And then when it hits this point, when it hits this point over here, it's the same thing as hitting this point over here, right? And then we continue on to hit C like that. 
but that's, that's the same thing as hitting this one over here. So as you can see, whenever we reflect it, we just, we're just reflecting it again. So we're just, rather than reflecting here, we just go here. We keep reflecting over and over again. And then, we, so we imagine we reflect this, this grid about the line CD. So B will go here, A will go here. Now let's say we, we reflect this square about, about this line AB. Then D goes here, C goes here. So this is definitely a tricky idea to keep in mind, but you know you'll actually see this idea. You, like this is a, you know, you see this idea a few times, and it'll definitely make sense to you. So you're imagining we're just reflecting, 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 and then we can do the same thing the other direction, right? It doesn't just apply vertically, right? So let's erase all of this. Oops. Okay. And we can do the same thing here. So imagine we take this grid and. Whenever we pass through this side, we're just staying reflected. So let's say we go here, and then let's say we hit this point, right? You know, it's the same thing. Let's say we, let's, the thing is we're reflecting our grid over, over the side. So let's say we reflect this grid over CB. We will get that this point is D, and this point is A, right? Take this, reflect about BC, we get CD, AB. And then we take this, reflect about DA, we get this is C and B. And I, I could have say C prime like I said earlier, but I'm not trying to show all of that. So imagine this is just the same point. So when it reaches this, this kind of fake C, it's kind of the same thing as you might think as, okay, going here, then it goes back and then it could C. Because the reflections would just cause the exact same behavior to happen. So it's like a new grid almost, you can see the same thing, right? When it goes from this point over here to side DA, it's equivalent to here. So we're, we're instead of instead of drawing the, another line in our same grid and then having this weird reflection to deal with, we just say, okay, the same behavior we see in grid and our original grid we see in our new grid, but this time we see the transition point from one grid to another as just a straight line. We can do the same logic of reflecting on the side, right? So we reflect we reflect DA over CB and we get this is DA, and then CB over DA we get this is CB. And then we can just keep doing the same reflection. It's all going to be the same. And I'm just going to show you now. So this is AB, right? Because we reflect it. You know, it's the same logic. We just keep doing that again and again. So this A, A reflected to here. And then D reflected here. And then A reflected here. And then C reflected here. And I'm going to show you a shortcut in a minute being reflected here to not have to do all of this work. But just for the sake of it, I wanted to show this fully just to make sure it's clear if, if this idea is new to you, right? A, A, we reflect this grid over the line BC, we get AD, right? It's just like a reflected grid. And then C here, C from here to here, and then B from here to here. This is kind of our new grid where we have a bunch of equivalents, right? Okay, and so now let's go back to our original problem. We have our line and we're basically trying to find when does it pass through a point? So a key feature of all of these points, right? We just draw this line, right? We literally just draw this line and we say, okay, when is it gonna hit? Well, when is it gonna hit some point? Did not use that color, but let's just use, when is it gonna hit a point? Oh my gosh. When is it gonna hit one of our vertices? So the key thing here is remember we say this is this point is zero, zero. This point is four, zero. This is four, four. This is zero, four. And we can like rearrange the grid. This is eight, zero, 12. Imagine our x-axis is 16, x equals 16, x equals 12, x equals 20, right? x equals four, or y equals four, y equals eight, y equals 12, y equals 16. That's kind of our, you know, our grid. And we're basically trying to find when does this point pass through a point that has a multiple of four x and y coordinates, right? Because imagine any of our points here in our grid, if it's gonna hit any of them, remember hitting a point in our grid is equivalent to hitting it in our original grid, it's just imagine a bunch of reflections later. So when is our line gonna pass through a point that has a multiple of four for the x coordinate and for the y coordinate? So x has to be some value, let's say four a, right? So we have y equals 18 over 25ths times for a plus eight fifths. And we're trying to find when is this quantity a multiple of four, an integer, of course, and a multiple of four. So let's just rewrite this as, we're gonna find a common denominator, 72a plus 40 over 25. 
And now we're just trying to find when is this a multiple of four and an integer? Okay, so we know this is going to be a multiple of four because we can just factor out a four and then write it as 18a plus 10 over 25, right? So we know this is going to be a multiple of four. We know we have a factor of four here. Now, all we need is for this quantity to be an integer, right? So when is 18a plus 10 over 25 an integer? When is 18a plus 10 a multiple of 25? That happens when 18a is negative 10 mod 25 or 15 mod 25. Okay, and we, how do we find this? Well, the easiest way is honestly, first of all, we know a has to be a multiple of five, clearly, right? Because otherwise this, ex this expression, 18a is not even going to be a multiple of five. How will it be 15 mod 25, right? 15 mod 25 requires that number to be a multiple of five. So let's try a equals five, 90. Is that 15 mod 25? Well, actually it is. 90 minus 15, 75. So yeah, 75 is zero mod 25. We found the smallest value of a that does work. Remember, we're looking for when it first passes. When does it terminate, right? When does it first hit a vertex of the square? So a equals five, a equals five would work. And remember a equals five is just x equals 20, right? So we have x equals 20. Oh, that's 20 over here. And then if we plug it in, we get that, okay, x equals 20 or we have a equals five, we plug it in here, we get five times 18, that's 90 plus 10 over 25, that's four times four, 16. So when a equals five, you get x equals 20 and y equals 16. So that's over here. Yeah, I know a little bit cheated a little bit drawing this grid because yeah, I knew what, what it would be in the end, but yeah, so we get this is x equals 20 and y equals 16. And then now like, remember how I labeled this grid using this method? I'm going to show you how you can do this without drawing the whole entire grid because I'm guessing you won't have time for that in the contest. So 20 comma 16, we found that point. And then it's almost like we can rewrite this as 5s comma 4s, where s is, is the side length of the square because we don't really care about that form. We're just trying to deal with their square. So given that we know it's like almost, we can think of it like 5 comma 4, even though it's not. Or, or like imagine if we kind of scale our grid so it's now five comma four in terms of our squares we have like okay one two three four five and then one two three four how can we determine the point without drawing our entire grid and just being like okay this is 20 this is 16 and keep reflecting it well here's kind of the trick here and it's a pattern that I, i'll try to show for you a happens at all of the like a and b alternate on these points a b a b a b a b right it alternates so uh, i'm trying to think of the best way to explain this here so each time we we go we're reflecting about a so a b and alternate here and then this next row is an alternating row of d and c right you can see that there and then this next row is an alternating row of a and b so the the key idea here is that we're going up four times in each row so a goes up four times. We have this repeating patterns in our rows and columns, right? We have AB and then we see, okay, AB, 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 right? Imagine we didn't have any of this grid. We just say the bottom is AB, 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 et cetera. And then we know our next row is DC, DC, et cetera, and so on. And we know this is 2016 or 5S, 4S. So we know that, okay, we go up one, two, three, four, five so that's this is like the point 5s and then we have okay dc dc let's try and align it dc dc and then okay we have these rows alternate as well but we're going up four so we go up one and then we go but it cycles so a b and then dc and then a b and then a b again right as you can see here so you can imagine here it's like okay one and then two and then three and then four right it alternates so going up four times is, is the same as the original row itself. So it's the same as just viewing this original row, right? Because in our 4S four, four line, that's like four, four, four lines above it, you can think of it like, right? The four lines above our bottom line, so we just view the bottom line essentially, right? Because this line is same as this line when we go up by four times the side length of the square. So these lines are equal, we know that now because 4S is even. And now we have, okay, 5s, so we go up by five in the bottom row. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and we see that it just alternates. So one, two, three, four, five, we get an answer of b. 
And as you can see here, it's the same thing here because these rows are the same at the top and bottom, they're letters. So yeah, the answer of this question is B. So yeah, it's a very interesting answer. The answer is a letter for one of the few problems in the test. Yeah, this is a definitely, uh, definitely I would say one of the harder end of the problems of the AMC 10, but I think it's fairly doable for a 25, especially if you're familiar with this reflection logic. You just have to find the equation of the line, find when it intersects, and that's, I think, relatively straightforward. And then the tricky part is figuring out how their letters repeat. And we find out that the point it intersects is 5s comma 4s. And then we can kind of figure out our pattern here, ABs and DCs, ABs and DCs, and figure out, okay, we have ABs in the bottom, and then ABs on top, that's gonna to be the same. So we just find, okay, one, two, three, four, five. And that's trying to give you an idea of how to figure it out without drawing a five by four grid. So you just kind of see the pattern and then you see, okay, it alternates and we're going up by five. So one, two, three, four, five. So it's gonna just be and cycling between AB, 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 AB. So we have one, two, three, four, five. And after we go up by five, it's kind of like the same parity wise as going up by one, giving us an answer of B. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.